Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I know I haven't been appearing on my channel for a couple months and now I just reappeared with orange bright hair and I hope you'll like it. I just got this at the start of this year because I wanted to start the year with a bang and you know truth to be told I just felt like having a bright colored hair is like something to do in my bucket list and I decided to just go for it. I hope you like it. So let's not get sidetracked. The main reason that I decided to hop on in front of the camera today, even though you might be hearing a little bit of thunder roaring because it's going to rain out there. Um, I just wanted to sit down and talk to you about how to start the New Year strong. I personally am a huge fan of the New Year's. I find it to be a time of the year to really reflect on how things has worked in the past year, whether it's the good or the bad, and to really take the lessons from it and to apply to the coming year to really just grow myself because I'm a huge person when it comes to self-development or my professional development and so I get really excited in New Year's. So the reason that I wanted to sit down here today is because I want to share with you the tips that has helped me to start the New Year strong in the previous years. In the past five years, I have been able to keep up with my New Year's resolutions of course, not every single one of it, but I, I'm not the kind that would forget my New Year's resolutions as the time passed, and I'm really proud about that. In fact, last year, I actually made this video that shares all about how to really split your New Year's resolutions into small achievable steps and how you can achieve it. So if you're interested to learn more about it, be sure to click on this link, okay? All right, let's get started. The first tip in really starting your New Year strong is to set a word of the year. I like the concept of the word of the year because it sets an intention for the rest of the year. It's more like a guideline for every time I get stressed or I get busy and I get overwhelmed. It's like a guideline to bring me back to where I want to be or how I want to feel in this year. So last year, for example, my word of the year was action. And the reason that I chose the word is because that I wanted to be back in action after a few years of taking things slow for the sake of my depression. And I want to really get back into action and make things happen. And at the same time, I wanted to take action for all the dreams that I had. I've always been dreaming and dreaming. And last year was the year that I decided that, hey, I'm gonna take action and to make things happen. And indeed, it turned out to be an amazing year for me because I took action. I, you know, I started a new job. I had a new career. I did, did everything that I wanted to do for my YouTube channel. And I felt so happy about it. So much so that when 2020 came, I started to be afraid or I started to have a lot of fear because I was wondering how can I talk? A year that was already so amazing so I had big dreams and a lot of them I want to achieve in the year of 2020 and so I was afraid that I'm gonna fall I was gonna make mistake that I won't be able to do as well as last year and so as I reflect on it I decided that the word of the year that I want to have for this year is relentless I want to be unafraid to fall. And even if I fall, I want to be unstoppable. I want to be able to stand up and fight again. Because I realized that successful people, they're not successful because they do things that everyone else is doing. They are successful because they do things that people are too afraid to do. They take risks. They are unafraid of mistakes. And even if, and even if they fall or even if they fail, they keep on moving forward. And so, I want to be successful. I want to achieve my big dreams. And so in order to do that, I have to be relentless. And I'm really glad with my choice of the word of the year. And I'm really excited about how things are going to take me for this year. And you know, just to put things in a perspective for you, the reason that I like the concept of the word of the year instead of like, you know, a big achievable goal. I mean, I still go for goals, but I guess how word of the year is different, it's because it's more like an intention. So for example, um, just picture this, okay? Um, right now as you're watching this video, you suddenly got hungry and there's no food at home. But you do have a car, so you decided to take your car out to search for food. You may not know what exactly you want to eat or where you want to go to eat, but at least you went out with an intention to search for food. 
and then as you drive around town you would maybe come across a restaurant that you like and you decided to stop and eat right so in life a lot of people don't really know what are their purpose in life what are their goals in life what exactly do they want and i think it's very common and it's completely fine but the most important part is you have to take action first in order to be able to navigate around your options and to know what you like and what you don't like and what you want in life so having an intention is like a booster it's like a starter point for you to start taking action it's the reason that you start driving out of your home to get out there to search for something and if you don't even search in the first place you would never find out what exactly your purpose in life is because you don't know what you don't know if you don't take action if you don't do anything you don't know what you don't know and nothing is going to change in your life all right so set intention find a word of the year it could be anything it could be a feeling it could be an action um, for example, like some word examples that I've used before so, or I know someone are using, there are words like joy, breathe, focus, survive. It could be anything. Just think of, just take a step back. You know, if you have to pause this video, just pause it and think about it or think about it before you go to bed tonight or when you're taking a shower. Think of how you want 2020 to feel for you. How do you want it to be for you? And, you know, I hope that this intention will help you to move forward in the year really strong. So let's go to the second point. Many people have New Year's resolutions that are somewhat habits related. They could be, I want to work out more so I can lose weight. I want to eat healthy. I want to stop taking more coffee or I want to stop smoking. Like there are many New Year's resolutions that are around the sphere of habits and habits are not easy to build. All right, it takes time, it takes self-discipline and one way that you can, that can really help you to be consistent and to be disciplined is to have somewhat of a tracking system for yourself. It could be a digital method, it could be a plain old pen and paper method, which I personally prefer. Previously, I had been using a bullet journal method that I would draw out these trackers and color it up myself. But I realized that as someone as busy as I am, I always end up delaying in tracking because I haven't drawn my page yet. So this year, I decided to opt for a planner that already have a tracking page, which is this journal. And it's actually a collaboration between Mossery and Amazing Grace. I got this through Amazing Grace. Oh, by the way, Amazing Grace is a local granola brand that I've been a fan of for like last since I guess here maybe I've been a fan for a while now so I when I saw that they have this collaboration in their latest package I decided to just get it as you can see there is like really nicely designed nicely printed there are spots where you can put down the inspiration from like films books places songs and a word like this like I told you my word of the year is relentless so I decided to draw it down to remind myself for the rest of the year. This page, I could put my role models, but um, I want to print out their photos instead. I haven't had time to do that. So there are like pages like that, but I guess most important for me, it's this habit tracker page. And um, what I like about it is that I can actually have like, you know, half a year in a glance. It's from January to June in a page. And of course, there's two sections of it for the rest of the year. So in this way, I'm able to track if I'm successfully keep up with the new year habits that I'm trying to keep. I, to be really honest, these habits that I had that I listed down for January, the first three were already a part of the habits that I want to build in the past year. They're not really my nearest resolutions, but more so a habit that I decided I want to keep track for the rest of this year. And as you can see that I'm not really obsessed with like making sure every box is colored. I think I'm not in a competition with myself to make sure that I achieve everything, but it's more so it helps me to check in with myself to see how in tune with uh, my life. Because for example, like some habits that I have like journaling and talking to God, a lot of these are like spiritual led. And so I wouldn't force them, but it helps me to keep track of and to you know take note of where i am and how i feel 
and yeah i love this habit tracking system okay i, I think i i went too deep into talking about this book but anyways find a tracking system that works well for you because consistency is key there are many studies that talks about how many days you need to do something in order to start a habit or to for a habit to really get stuck onto you um, some says it's 28 days some says it's 90 days i'm not really sure about that but i think the important part of this is to be consistent and to have self-discipline and having a tracking system is definitely going to help you to be accountable to yourself all right so the third way of starting the year strong is to really learn how to focus instead of having a big list of like many things you want to achieve i would highly recommend you to really look into the list that you've already written and to think of you know the intention that you have for the year so look at all these goals that you have already listed and ask yourself which one of these goals will be most impactful to my life to the intention that i have for this year and just focus on that one thing all right just take one goal that's the most impactful and focus on that and if you really want to go beyond one goal the maximum that i would say you should go is three goals all right just focus on the top three goals that will be the most impactful to your life and do well in it because the thing is like many times especially at the new year we get excited we get energized we want to achieve things and it's good but at the same time when you're trying to juggle between so many goals and so many things you won't do well in any of it trust me i've been there when i first started you know taking my nearest resolution seriously i wanted to like achieve so many things but i realized that many times these goals they kind of counter each other like i wanted to spend more time with my friends and family but i also want to start a side hustle and i want to do well in school and i ended up not being able to do any of it because we only have that much time in a day in a week and in a year so try to think of the intention that you have and what exactly you want to achieve this year there is always a season for something so it doesn't mean that not focusing on the remaining goals right now um, means that you're just going to give up on them forever it's just that it might not be the time to focus on them right now because they won't be as impactful to your life right get what i mean so take you know list um take a look at your list of the goals that you want to achieve and then really ask yourself which one will be most impactful and just focus on that one thing all right so those are the three ways that i have for you to really start the new year strong and most importantly end the new year strong you know new year's resolution it's not just about the new year it's about new habits about new goals that you want to achieve so that you can make this year 2020 the year that you will always remember it will be the year of growth a year of development a year of changes so it's important to make sure that you remember this new year's resolutions for the rest of the year and you know i really am excited for my new year's resolutions and yours please comment down below and tell me more about it because i'm all about goal setting and like continuous growth and development and so i want to see what you're up to for the year 2020 and you know one takeaway that i had from last year that i learned from my mentor is that don't be afraid to set big dreams okay aim high shoot for the stars because even if you miss the stars you might land on the moon i really like this metaphor and i hope that you take that with you and set bigger dreams for the year and i'm excited for you and i so all right let's make sure that we make 2020 our year okay i'm really looking forward to make more youtube videos for you in this coming new year so be sure to subscribe for more entrepreneurship female empowerment productivity content that will help us all grow this year okay i'll see you in my next video and be sure to check out this two video before you go okay bye 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 bye